for 50 years, towns who are in the minority have effectively had their knee on the neck of the townships, 12 votes to 10. Deep down, I think you know this is wrong. You're all decent Muskokans and you've all had political success because you are. This is kind of your George Floyd moment. Sure, you can look the other way and keep the pressure on, or you can ease up on the neck. We ask that you please do the right thing. As seasonal residents, your majority feel very underserved by the current representation model. We are asking politely, but very clearly, that you please recognize us as equal partners in the district and not perpetuate our current status as second-class citizens. Together, let's build a better governance model in Muskoka based on fairness and mutual respect, starting right here today. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I yield back the floor, but we'd be happy to take any questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Monroe. Council, to you, any questions at this point uh, for Mr. Monroe? Yes, Councillor Smith. Well, first of all, Mr. Chair, I'd say I'm deeply offended that he has compared the death of George Floyd to a minor political squabble in Muskoka. That's disgusting. Would you like a response or not? No, I don't. You've already offended me once. And joining me now to speak about this recent comment is the president of the Muskoka Lakes Association, Deborah Martin Downs. Deborah, thank you very much for taking the time today. Well, thank you for asking us. Deborah, um, so we, we've heard from Graydon on these, these comments that were made uh, during the meeting and uh, did, as mentioned, I wanted to provide an opportunity um, for your association to, to sort of speak to what had happened with that as well. Well, uh, so first off, it's a <clears throat> Muskoka Lakes Association has been engaged in this municipal modernization effort uh, for the last uh, few months that they've been uh, engaged in it themselves. Uh, and so we've been, uh, it's been a very passionate issue for many of our members. And I think that came out in Mr. Monroe's comments to council uh, that, uh, that were presented yesterday. Uh, unfortunately, we did not uh, the MLA and the Friends of Muskoka as well. We had put out um, joint <clears throat> materials and neither of us had seen those comments, so they were not condoned by us. And it was, uh, in our view, a very inappropriate uh, comparison and a um, lapse in judgment on Mr. Monroe's part for to suggest that in any way the situation that we face in Muskoka is in any way uh, similar to what is being faced in the U.S. Uh, and, uh, and in other jurisdictions and other communities where uh, we're black lives have been affected by uh, by social circumstance so uh, so in that regard uh, mr. Monroe uh, realized his error in judgment he has provided a, a uh, apology to the committee members and likewise the MLA and uh, friends of Muskoka also provided a letter of apology and uh, to the um, to the members and to our the other uh, waterfront associations who also joined us uh, so that uh, uh, you know we're we're very worried that the the message of why we were sitting at council why we've been engaged in this file is now somehow being circumvented by that 15 seconds of, of lapse judgment. So I think the question that's on everyone's minds at this point, at least we've been receiving this question, is what, what happens now um, with Mr. Monroe? You know, what, what is the, the movement from the association with him? Well, we're still having some discussions internally, but I think it's fair to say that Mr. Monroe is not going to be representing us on the Municipal Modernization Council or the, um, not on the council, but rather re representing the MLA's interests on this file. Uh, we will we will um, have a, a different voice of, uh, of our representation there. Uh, we, we do have a code of conduct that we will be reviewing to make sure that uh, the members are both aware and that make sure that maybe the code of conduct needs to be upgraded slightly to address that so we are we're going to review uh review that and um and then you know one of the things that 
people join committees like ours because they're passionate about issues and their passions sometimes get the better of them. So sometimes we have to, um, we have to coach people in terms of how to, um, how to deal with councils and appropriately and respectfully comment on things. So I think we will also look to do a little training with our board members, our directors to make sure that, that everybody understands how these comments can be um, taken um, in, in his case, not necessarily uh, inappropriately, but just that they that what we say matters and people care, and it's very obvious that people are caring that we made a we made an error in, in this in this commentary, in this in these comments, and that we uh, and it and it's been detrimental to our issue. Deborah, one just one thing I do want to um, kind of focus in on is you know you know I received a copy of this speech. It was it was pre written into this, so I mean he had an opportunity at the time to review what he'd written and, and make a a second judgment. He did not do that, obviously. So how do we, you know, how does the MLA avoid this in the future? Do you believe you might kind of put in some type of oversight for, um, you know, future um, speeches or comments that might be made during these types of meetings? Uh, yes, absolutely. We will. We, we actually did review the original version, but he had added that at the end and that without us having seen it and didn't uh, indicate that he had revised it so that that was uh, again a problem in our in our system of reviewing but we're all volunteers so that makes it a little more difficult for us sometimes to to do that mm -hmm. uh so yes i will be suggesting that anybody who is uh, speaking to councils both they understand the implications of our words that we are not um, we are part of an organization that represents people so we need to make sure that our words are respectful and um, and appropriate and then secondly that they are reviewed and approved before they go to council and uh, and that they shall not stray from so so it, it is a lesson learned and uh, and we're um, we again we apologize for all the, the the problems that this has caused because it's it, it does detract from the message that we want modernization to to happen and we've been supporting it and we have some uh, some there's some really good action that the municipalities are prepared to, uh, to take to uh, make equal representation a, a thing for waterfront residents and uh, and we're very grateful for that but it's it's losing <laughs> we're losing that losing sight of that and in, 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 while we're profiling this so absolutely I, I think it's important to move forward and obviously um, try to move past this type of moment is as tonally sort of um, deaf as it was. You know, I think um, the message is clear that we really do want to focus on on modernizing our governance system and obviously trying to find the best way to do that. So I, I do appreciate Absolutely. you taking the time to respond to this today. I know a lot of people had questions um, from, you know, a response from the MLA. So we do appreciate you taking the time for that. And, and we do hope that respectfully we can all move forward and and uh, find the best way to move the, to do that. Absolutely, we are in total agreement with that. So thank you for, uh, for seeking our opinion on it. Mm -hmm.